Hi, I'm Brad Mignani from the Collaboration High Touch Technical Support Team. In this video, I'll cover how to configure next generation security on a SIP phone system integration between Unity Connection and Unified Communications Manager, also known as Call Manager. Next generation security over SIP provides confidentiality, integrity, and authentication through cryptographic algorithms. Next generation encryption is more secure as it restricts a SIP interface to use SuiteB ciphers based on TLS 1.2, SHA-2, and AES-256 protocols. It uses the RSA and EC key-based Tomcat certificates. Several requirements need to be outlined. Next generation security requires a Unity Connection version 11.0 or later restricted software build. Restricted software builds allow encryption on the product. Unrestricted builds do not allow encryption. The Unity Connection cluster must be registered with smart licensing with the export controlled functionality allowed. Once licensed, the util CUC encryption enable command must be executed at the CLI of the CUC publisher to enable encryption or the next generation security configuration will fail. Call Manager must be running a version 11.0 or later restricted software build. Call Manager cluster must be registered with smart licensing with export controlled functionality allowed. The Call Manager cluster must be running in mixed mode. In this video, we'll assume that the Call Manager cluster has already been placed into mixed mode. Please refer to the Call Manager documentation for how to configure mixed mode. For the purposes of this video, we'll be using self-signed certificates on both Unity and Call Manager, but CA-signed certificates are also supported. To configure Unity Connection for next generation security, first add a port group. Second, add voicemail ports. Third, download self-signed Tomcat RSA and ECDSA certificates. Fourth is an optional step if you decide to use CA-signed certificates. And fifth is also an optional step if you decide to adjust cipher negotiation requirements. Step 1. Adding a port group. First begin by logging into Cisco Unity Connection Administration and navigate to Telephony Integrations, Port Group. Click Add New. Change Port Group Type to SIP and enter a display name. Change the SIP security profile to 5061-TLS. Check both the Enable Next Generation Encryption and Secure RTP checkboxes. Enter the CUCM IPv4 address or host name and port 5061. Click Save. If encryption wasn't first enabled via CLI, you'll receive error messages like this when saving the port group settings. Then at the top, click Edit Servers. Under TFTP Servers, click Add. Enter your TFTP Servers IPv4 address or host name. Click Save. The port group must be reset. Navigate back to the port group and click the Reset button. Then click the Refresh menu to reflect that a reset is no longer required. Step 2. Adding voicemail ports to our port group. Under Telephony Integrations, select Port, then click Add New. Select the number of voicemail ports you want to create. We'll assign these ports to the port group that we just created in the previous step, then click Save. Step 3. Certificate Configuration. I'm using existing Tomcat self-signed RSA and ECDSA certificates. You can regenerate these to extend their expiration dates if you choose, but it's not required. On Unity Connection, log into Cisco Unified OS Administration and select Security, Certificate Management, and type Tomcat in the Filter field, then click Find. Click the publisher's Tomcat certificate, which has a key type of RSA, and click Download PEM file, and save it as something descriptive. Click the publisher's Tomcat ECDSA certificate, which has a key type of EC, and click Download PEM file, and save it as something descriptive. 
For a CUC cluster, repeat these same two steps on the subscriber server for its Tomcat and Tomcat ECDSA self-signed certificates. Keep these certificates, they will be used later. Step 4. This step is optional, but if you're using CA signed certificates, generate CSRs for both the RSA and ECDSA Tomcat certificates and get them signed by your CA. Here's a table that shows all certificate and certificate chain upload combinations, since we're only covering self-signed in this video. The CA chain used to sign Unity's Tomcat certificates will need to be uploaded to Call Manager as a Call Manager dash trust. The CA chain used to sign Call Manager's Call Manager dot PEM certificate will need to be uploaded to Unity as a Call Manager dash trust. It's common that the same CA signing chain is used to sign both sides for simplicity. Just note, there's no need to upload Call Manager's Call Manager .pem certificate on Unity Connection since the Call Manager .pem certificate is automatically downloaded via TFTP by Unity during a port group reset. Step 5. This is also an optional step if you decide to adjust Cypher negotiation requirements. The Cypher preferences on Unity can be modified under System Settings, General Configuration, but leaving them set at their defaults will work. They can always be modified later once the integration is functional. To configure Call Manager for next generation security, for this video we're assuming the cluster has already been enabled for mixed mode. First, create a SIP trunk security profile. Second, create a SIP profile with options ping enabled. Third, create a secure SIP trunk. Fourth, upload CUC Tomcat certificates to Call Manager. Fifth is an optional step if you decide to adjust Cypher negotiation requirements. Sixth, create a route group. Seventh, create a route list. Eighth, create a route pattern. Ninth, create a voicemail pilot. Tenth, create a voicemail profile. And eleventh, assign voicemail profile to directory numbers. Step one, begin by creating the SIP trunk security profile. Log into Cisco Unified CM Administration and select System, Security, SIP trunk security profile and click find to list all SIP trunk security profiles. Locate the default non-secure SIP trunk profile and click the copy icon on the far right which will create a copy for us to modify. Change both the name and the description fields to indicate that it's a secure profile. Change the device security mode to encrypted. Add the FQDN of Unity connection in the secure certificate subject or subject alternate name field. Confirm the incoming port is configured as 5061. Check the three boxes for Accept Out of Dialog Refer, Accept Unsolicited Notification, and Accept Replaces Header. Then click Save. Step 2. I suggest using a SIP profile with the Options Ping feature enabled so that we can see the SIP trunk status and SIP trunk duration from Call Manager. Under Device, Device Settings, SIP Profile, click Find to list all SIP profiles. Locate the default standard SIP profile and click the copy icon to the far right which will create a copy for us to modify. Change both the name and the description fields to indicate that it's a SIP profile with options ping enabled. Scroll down to the SIP options ping section and enable the enable options ping checkbox. Then click save. Step 3. To create a SIP trunk go to device trunk and click Add New. Select SIP Trunk for Trunk Type and click Next. Enter a device name and give it a description. Select your device pool. Enable the SRTP Allowed checkbox. Under the Incoming Call section, enable the Redirecting Diversion Header Delivery Inbound checkbox. Under the Outbound Call section, enable the Redirecting Diversion Header Delivery Outbound checkbox. Enter the IP or FQDN destination address of Unity Connection with the destination port of 5061. Assign the SIP trunk security profile we created in Step 1. Assign the SIP profile with Options Ping which we created in Step 2. Click Save. Step 4. To upload certificates on Call Manager, log in to Cisco Unified OS Administration and select Security Certificate Management and click the Upload Certificate Certificate Chain button. 
select the certificate purpose of call manager dash trust and type a description. Click browse and select your publisher's RSA tomcat.pem that was saved earlier, then click upload. Repeat the same process, this time for your publisher's EC tomcat ecdsa.pem that was saved earlier. For a CUC cluster, repeat the same steps for the subscriber server's RSA and EC Tomcat certificates. For the changes to take effect, restart the Cisco Call Manager service on the publisher from the Unified Serviceability webpage. The Cisco HA proxy service must be restarted via command line on the Call Manager publisher. Step 5 is optional. Cipher preferences can also be modified on Call Manager under System, Enterprise parameters, but leaving them set at their defaults will work. They can always be modified later once the integration is functional. Step 6. Create a route group. Navigate to Call Routing, Route Hunt, Route Group, and click Add New. Enter a route group name. Select the secure SIP trunk we created and click Add to Route Group button. Then click Save. Step 7. Create a route list. Navigate to Call Routing, Route Hunt, Route List, then click Add New. Enter a route list name and select your desired Cisco Unified Communications Manager group, then click Save. Under the Route List Member Information section, ensure the selected groups contains the route group we just created. If you don't see your route group listed, click the Add Route Group button and select it from the Route Group dropdown and click Save. Step 8. To create a route pattern, navigate to Call Routing, Route Hunt, Route Pattern. Click Add New. Enter a route pattern digit string. For the Gateway Route List dropdown, select the route list we just configured. Then click Save. Step 9. To create a voicemail pilot, navigate to Advanced Features, Voicemail, Voicemail Pilot, Click Add New. Enter a voicemail pilot number. Then click Save. Step 10. To create the voicemail profile, navigate to Advanced Features, Voicemail, Voicemail Profile, and click Add New. Enter a voicemail profile name. For the voicemail pilot dropdown, assign the voicemail pilot we just created. Then click Save. Step 11. This voicemail profile can now be assigned to phone DNs under Call Routing Directory Number. Click Find and then click a DN and scroll down to the Voicemail Profile section and select the voicemail profile we just created. Click Save, then Apply Config. We can view the status of our next generation security SIP trunk under Device Trunk. Click Find. Here we can see the trunk is in full service and the amount of time it's been in full service. Place a call over this SIP trunk to Unity by dialing the voicemail pilot number from an IP phone or pressing the messages button on a phone assigned to the voicemail profile we created. You will hear Unity's system prompts and the phone will display a small padlock icon indicating that both the signaling and audio streams are encrypted. You have successfully configured next generation security over SIP. Thanks for watching.